here, have you been to Kashmir? We have unfortunately not, but we've been to Jammu many times. Yeah. So why haven't you been to Kashmir? Um, I've asked this question to my dad occasionally, and he hasn't been either in for 17, 18 years, maybe even longer now. Um, and he just doesn't think it's safe. Um, I think a part of him also doesn't want to mar the memories that he has of Kashmir, um, his childhood, and just go back and see what it has become. It's not the same anymore. Um, so when he tells a story of Kashmir, you know, he's painted this beautiful picture of this like haven for Kashmiri pundits. And I feel like a part of him doesn't want that painting to be marred by something that is still prevalent there. Sure. So if you have never been to Kashmir and you identify yourself as a Kashmiri, how do you maintain your Kashmiri identity? I mean, we have gatherings here several times throughout the year. Uh, right now, we're at a KOA camp. Um, so at, at this camp right now, there's over, there's over 400 Kashmiri people meeting at, at, in this um, one um, resort, which is amazing, right, in the US. You don't really see these, you know, these kind of gatherings. Definitely, and then we have you know um, functions within our own zone. Working in the Midwest, so Zone Seven, um, where we have the volley functions, Shivratri functions, um, and then even within the household, uh, every Shivratri we do a proper puja. We do Abhishekam for the Shivalingam. My mom makes yellow paneer nadru uh, all the time. We love Kashmiri food. Rahul loves Rogan Josh. Or we just the model. <laughs> yeah, you know, list goes on. <laughs> so Kashmiri food is one thing you've identified. Kashmiri, uh, the practice of uh, Kashmiri Shaivism is another thing you've identified. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you can identify that connects you to Kashmir and a beautiful land that you have not been able to visit because of the current uh, situation? Definitely. Probably the music is one big thing. Um, my sister uh, yeah. learns uh, Indian classical music and at her Vishard, she sang a couple uh, Kashmiri songs too. So she's uh, been involved. In yeah, definitely. Um, my dad he used to sit with me at the harmonium when I was four years old, and he used to teach me Kashmiri music, Harmog Bartal, Hukus Bokus, Beltai Mado, the list goes on. Um, and then I had the opportunity to sing two of those at my Basharad. Um, and music is just such a huge part of my lifestyle, and just to incorporate my own culture into my passion is just something that helps me connect with my Kashmiri heritage. Now you mentioned you've gone back to India and you've gone to Jammu, which is part of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, but a different culture. Mm -hmm. So can you describe your last visit to Jammu? Yeah, sure. Um, even though we went to India recently, we didn't end up going to Jammu. Yeah. So last time we went to Jammu, I believe, was 2009. Um, and So how old were you then? I was 10. I was around uh, seven. seven or six, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had a huge extended uh, Kashmiri family in Jammu, and we all lived in one house. We have tons of cousins that we're very close to, and we still uh, stay in contact with. Um, so, you know, we all slept on the floor together. Uh, we'd have evening chai or kehava. Uh, you know, we'd have rot. Uh, you know, um, so a lot of, you know, Kashmiri culture is still preserved within Jammu, since they're still considered, you know, part of the same state. Um, there's a, still a lot of Kashmiris that do still live in Jammu, especially Kashmiri pundits. Um, so we were invited to go play cricket outside with the neighbors, and they were also Kashmiri pundits. So that was really fun. Correct. So your father left in 1990, and then he ended up in the United States of America. So you're, you're very, uh, very uh, present to his uh, experiences. And it seems that you're both wanting to uh, ensure that uh, the struggles he went through to preserve his culture and heritage is something that you carry on. Definitely. I mean, we are blessed yeah. that he went through so much and, you know, built this life from nothing um, to the point where, you know, we have such solid education and, you know, financially we're stable. And, you know, we're just so lucky that um, he made the choice to take the harder path. Um, just he's told us so many stories of what went on in Kashmir, how his family had to evacuate their home and take refuge in an abandoned school building. Um, you know, the atrocities that were committed against his own family members and these heart wrenching stories. And, you know, you just you just feel so lucky that, you know, you 
never had to face anything like that. But since it's your own family, you still feel so connected to it and you want to fight for it. When I was um, seven years old, um, Rahul was four, we went um, marching at Human Rights Day in Naperville and we had these signs that said, save Amarnath, save Kashmir. Um, we were kids, we didn't know what it meant then, but now we do. And that's so powerful that these Kashmiri pundits, they came from Kashmir, they came to the US, but they're still fighting for the Kashmiris that are still left in India, that are still going through these atrocities. They're still fighting for them. And it shows, like Rahul said, how strong the bond is between Kashmiri pundits. Yeah.